Hello everyone. In the previous video, we looked at the OAuth2 password authentication mechanism, and this is used for making calls to Cloud Foundry API calls. Uh, so you will see them quite often in multi-tenant applications to create uh, dynamic routes. Uh, and this is how you would uh, set up the destination itself. Uh, so you would use the client ID as CF, and uh, the client secret is uh, there is no password here. And you would use a technical user account for your username and password, and then you would use the UAA token URL. And then with the help of uh, this authentication mechanism, uh, what you could uh, do is uh, you could go ahead and uh, maybe like uh, the Cloud Foundry API. So if you search on Google for Cloud Foundry API, uh, then you can make calls to these uh, Cloud Foundry APIs. Uh, let's say you want to get the list of all the apps, uh, then you can make a call to this endpoint. And that's what we saw in the last uh, video where we made a call to this endpoint and we got a list of all the apps. Uh, so here in my business application studio, I'm already logged in. And you will see if I run this command CF OAuth dash token, uh, I would already have uh, this uh, token that has uh, Cloud Controller uh, uh, read and write permissions. Uh, so basically, we are using this uh, uh, kind of an OAuth token uh, to make the calls. Uh, again, this is uh, kind of restricted in the sense that uh, you only want to use this uh, to make calls to the Cloud Controller and so on. Uh, you wouldn't use this in uh, other other scenarios uh, as much. Now, going back to the next one. Uh, so in this uh, video, uh, we will look at the OAuth client credentials, uh, this uh, uh, authentication flow. And this uses the client credentials grant flow. And uh, what you do is you supply the client credentials. Uh, now let's have a quick look at how this thing works. Uh, so according to the OAuth 2.0 specs, uh, so applications can be broadly classified as uh, confidential and public applications, uh, confidential client or public client, uh, that's how you would say it. Uh, now public client, uh, public applications, uh, these run on devices that a user controls. So for example, uh, if uh, uh, like a single page application that runs on your browser, so this is something that the app uh, user controls or an application that runs on your mobile device. Now all these public uh, uh, applications, uh, they cannot uh, have a secret uh, because uh, let's say you have a single page application built with SAP UI 5 uh, you can easily go into the sources and you can like put a breakpoint you can see what is happening behind the scenes you can look at the JavaScript code and so on uh, even on a mobile application maybe it's not as straightforward but you still have access to the, uh, the code uh, you can look into the binary files and so on uh, and even yeah so any application that runs on a device that a user controls, the user can eventually hack into it, uh, maybe even look into the network stuff and so on, and be able to uh, see anything that is stored uh, secretly. Uh, so uh, when we talk about client credentials, this grant flow, uh, we are only talking about the confidential clients. Uh, this is where the user does not have control on the device that it runs. Uh, so Typically, these uh, confidential applications, uh, the application runs on a server uh, that the end user has no control of, and uh, they can hold on to credentials in a secure manner. Uh, so that's the key thing. Uh, these confidential applications, uh, they can hold on to credentials in a very secure manner. Now, the client credentials grant flow is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's almost like passing in a username and a password, uh, but instead of a username and a password, uh, what you pass in is a client ID and a secret. Uh, so the confidential application, uh, this client, uh, it can hold on to this client ID and the secret. Uh, the client ID is publicly available, but the secret is the main thing, and the confidential application has the means to hold on to the secret uh, uh, in a secure manner. Uh, and and what it allows you to do is this confidential application uh, can now send this client ID and secret to the resource or whatever uh, that they want access to, to this resource server, and then it can get uh, and it can have access, a limited access. And uh, there is no end user involved. Uh, so you see that it's uh, acting on behalf of the application itself and not on behalf of the user. And typically these are called two-legged auth uh, because there's only two legs to this uh, authorization flow. Uh, so the confidential application, it sends the client ID and secret to the resource authorization server, uh, gets back an access token, and then sends the access token to get limited access to the resource. Now, an example that 
you could do uh, is uh, you can have a cap application uh, on, using Node.js, and obviously this runs on SAP BTP, so this is a back-end uh, application, so this is a confidential client, and this can hold on to the client ID and secret, uh, so you create a destination with the client ID and secret, and uh, let's say you create an employee, so there is a create handler to create an employee, and uh, when this happens, uh, you can call an integration flow, uh, so you are a third party application so this is your third uh, so you are trying to get access uh, limited access to this iflow and you can get the with the client id and secret then you're able to call this iflow uh, and this runs the iflow where the employee onboarding happens uh, and this happens uh, without the end user context so this app so it's more like an application to application uh, they talk to each other and so on uh, so in this case uh, when you, you have a client ID and secret and you get the access token, um, there is no reason for a refresh token because uh, the application itself, uh, it doesn't get annoyed uh, every time somebody asks for a client ID and secret. So this is not an end user typing in the client ID and secret. Uh, it's kind of a machine to machine. So uh, once it gets its access token and if the access token is about to expire, it can again send the client ID and secret uh, to get a new access token. So, uh, so the client, uh, confidential client can keep Keep sending client uh, client ID and secret uh, every time it needs uh, access token, and actually that is a little bit more secure as well. Okay, so how would you set up uh, this uh, uh, this uh, destination? And what we will do is we will go through this uh, scenario right here. Again, this can this is just a uh, one simple scenario, but uh, uh, in any situation where you have a, a confidential client uh, trying to access uh, another application, another resource server for ac limited access, uh, then you can use this uh, client credentials grant flow. And it's uh, fairly straightforward to set it up as well. Uh, so it doesn't have to be limited to cap application and an integration flow. It can be between a cap application and another cap, a cap application, uh, or it can be, as long as it's a, a, a confidential client, uh, we can use this uh, client credentials grant flow. And it's fairly straightforward. Okay, so, but we are going to take uh, this scenario right here and see how we can set it up. Uh, so first, uh, let me go ahead and show you the iFlow. The iFlow itself, I'm not uh, too concerned. It's a very simple iFlow. Uh, so it's, uh, if I go into my iFlow right here, uh, so all I have is a content modifier. And if I look into this uh, content modifier, uh, all I have is a message that says that it's uh, the onboarding has started. Uh, so that's my message right here. And it's uh, triggered by a, HTTP adapter, an inbound HTTP adapter. Uh, so uh, it's going to be uh, in out. So it's going to be synchronous. Uh, so this is an HTTP adapter. Uh, and if I look in my content modifier, all I'm doing in the message body is have a message that says onboarding initiated. So fairly simple iFlow. Uh, now the trick is how do we uh, how do we uh, trigger this iFlow? Uh, this integration suite itself is in a different sub account uh, than the SAP BTP uh, CAP application itself. The CAP application is in a completely different sub account. Uh, so here I have the message body. Uh, so what I do is uh, I go into my integration sub account. Uh, so this is my integration sub account. And I need to create a process integration runtime service. Uh, so here I've already created one, but I'll show you how you can create one. Uh, so if you go into this uh, create button and you can search for process integration runtime and uh, and then you select the plan uh, which is the iflow plan and then you give any name you want asdf and you say next and uh, you want the client uh, credentials uh, uh, the grant type as client credentials and then you create uh, i've already created one uh, so i'm not going to create another one uh, so then you will get this uh, uh, process runtime uh, this uh, service uh, running this instance running uh, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and create a key uh, so here you can go into action and you can say create service key and then you can give a name for the service key uh, so you let me give some name and i'll say this is the key and uh, then you can say create and this is going to create you the service key and once it creates the service key uh, this uh, key uh, will hold the client id the secret and also the url the token url uh, so you would uh, open up this uh, key right here uh, and you would get the client id the secret and uh, the url uh, which is in this key and then you would go to the 
sub account where your uh, cap application is. Uh, so if I look into this key right here, uh, you will see that it has the client ID, the client secret, and so on. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need it. Um, so what you can go ahead and do is you copy those uh, client ID and secret and go into the sub account where your uh, cap application is running. And then here is where you create the destination. Uh, and uh, the destination you can create by creating new destination. And the values you would enter uh, are right here. Uh, so you would uh, give a name for the destination. Uh, you would call it uh, HTTP. Uh, the URL you copied, uh, uh, you can, uh, this is the URL for your, uh, uh, for your iFlow. Uh, so you would uh, put in your iFlow URL. Uh, so here, if you go into this um, uh, integration suite, uh, you should see the, uh, integration suite, the iFlow for the for the iFlow that you just created, uh, but you don't have to put the entire path. Uh, you can simply put it all the way to the host name, right? Uh, so uh, you would put in the path for the URL right there. Uh, so if you go in here and uh, for step one. Yeah, so you would uh, use this uh, URL right here. Uh, and then for the, uh, if I go back to my thing here, uh, you would select OAuth2 client credentials and the client ID and secret you copied from the integration suite uh, sub account to, uh, when you created the key and the token service URL you can put this in here as well. And that's it. So you have uh, the destination created. Uh, so now you're all set. Uh, so if you go back to your application here, uh, so where's my application? So if I go back to my application here, uh, I'm all set to run this application. Uh, so what I've done here is in my application, uh, I'm using Cloud SDK, uh, SAP Cloud SDK, uh, and this I have a schema.cds, and in my schema.cds I have a very simple employees. Um, so I have a handler uh, that is going to create the employee and uh, this is going to create the employee. And then once the employee is uh, created, uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating, I'm executing an HTTP request uh, to this uh, destination. This is my destination name, which uh, points to uh, the one that I just uh, showed you. And I'm running this iFlow. This is the one that um, uh, initiates the onboarding. And uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so if I want to run this, I can run this in a hybrid mode. Uh, so I can say CDS watch uh, dash dash profile hybrid. And uh, the Cloud SDK will go ahead and uh, grab uh, this uh, destination that I just showed you right here. And then it's uh, going to get all the details and it's going to make a call. And I should get back the message uh, on my console log uh, saying that uh, the uh, saying that the onboarding has initiated. So when I send a request to create an employee, uh, it's going to be able to call the uh, integration suite iFlow uh, using the destination that we created with the client credentials. Okay, so key takeaway here is uh, you will use the client credentials uh, destination uh, whenever you have a confidential client and uh, there are no user context involved. Okay, see you in the next video. Thanks.